Well, I feel very privileged, I'm very proud. I'm happy that my success has brought me to this point, and I'm very grateful to the Nigerian Air Force leadership to for the opportunity to have this and uh, to have this title. I'm very grateful, and I'm looking forward to giving my best to the service. Hi, everybody! How you all doing? Good day to you. Oh, welcome back to another video on my channel. This video is a tribal to the fallen first combatant female flying officer in the person of Tolu Lokwe Arotile. So I heard about this lady some time in the beginning of this year and I was really really um, elated in my spirit because first of all she's a woman and uh, for her to have that kind of gallant spirit to join the military and to even be in the Air Force so um, yeah I, I followed that story and she was not the only one there was another lady but uh, she was also part of that uh, um, a video that the Nigerian Air Force showed and uh, yeah she did uh, talk about herself and um, her ambition and how she got to where she was she was really grateful let me just let you watch a little bit of this clip that I'm talking about. The Nigerian Air Force presents to you the first Nigerian Air Force female helicopter pilot. I'm flying off Satsi Arutli. I was admitted into the Nigerian Defense Academy on the 22nd of September 2012 and was commissioned into the Nigerian Air Force on the 16th of September 2017. I joined the military simply out of passion for it. Being a military personnel has been a long-term ambition. The courage and what they stand for is simply exceptional. Yeah, you can see how beautiful she is and how strong and how, you know, like uh, the courage she exudes. And uh, she has been on missions, you know, in Castina, you know, dealing with all those people. They say they are bandits or whether they call them Boko or whatever. They say she was really doing them strong thing from up there you know uh, throwing the thing on them dealing with them mercilessly so because of uh, how she's doing the job you know eliminating those enemies there that was why everybody is thinking that there is more to it in fact even her sister that uh, her sister was the person that took her to the air force base that day and the sister uh, paints a very good picture of the air force base and you know they said she she was hit by a car that was um, trying to reverse because they wanted to greet her. I don't know how much of the story you know already, but let me just give you a brief of the um, official story. The official story is that um, she had an accident at the Air Force Base there in Kaduna and that um, um, former classmates of hers who, who went to the same Nigerian Air Force Secondary School, uh, they were like driving along the uh, uh, you know Air Force Base within the Air Force Base and they kind of saw her. She was walking in the other direction. So they now said that they wanted to reverse to go and greet her. You see, so um, in the course of that reversing, they said it was maybe done with speed. And instead of them to, you know, kind of reverse successfully and greet her, it turned out that they knocked her down. You see, I don't know what kind of freak accident this thing is, but this is the official narrative. But the sister is saying that she knows this terrain, she knows this base, and they have speed bumps. And I know what that uh, speed bumps is because, you know, um, I've been on a military base before. So, so uh, that speed bump is something like a, a welling like this, you know, it just kind of goes up like this. So when you are driving, you can't speed, you know, you just get to that place because, you know, if you drive with speed, you, you, you can even somersault because uh, because of those bumps. So when you get to that bump, you just kind of go like this, you know. Uh, so um, the question is, at what speed were they driving? And actually, uh, they have actually uh, released the names of those uh, young men who were in that car, and none of them is even uh, a northern uh, one is uh, um, Benue Adejo, somebody Adejo. The other two were actually Yoruba young men. So I don't know. Um, um, whether uh, there is more to eat uh, because if they were you know the usual northerner you would assume the worst but since they were not 
nothing as per se. They were also Yoruba like herself. You know, I don't know that, that maybe there is something to eat or there is nothing to eat. Or, you know, it's Nigeria and it's the Nigerian military and a lot of things have been going on there. And we also know that uh, a disproportionate number of uh, Southern uh, military personnel are being eliminated in different ways. And this is not an allegation. This is actually a fact, you know. And so when somebody uh, that is doing very well eliminating the targets from up and uh, there is the hunch that maybe the government doesn't really want to uh, eliminate those people that they are calling bandits or they are calling Boko Haram, that the government is actually trying to, in fact, they have actually reintegrated so-called repentant Boko Haram into the military. So when you see all these kind of discrepancies within an esteemed organization like the Nigerian military, and you see a lot of their personnel uh, uh, behaving unprofessionally, uh, you know, mistreating civilians that they are supposed to protect and this kind of thing happening within the air force base you know when somebody joins the military something like this that the person is going to depart earlier than usual uh that you know that uh, that is imminent is is some Thing that is present within the military because of course uh, in Igbo we say Ana like you are not afraid of bullets when you are going to war so something like this is expected but not on the base but if it was on the front maybe something happened to her aircraft and so you know but it was not in the front but within the base and it's so freaky you know and uh, the sister was the one that drove her to that place and the sister painted a, a very good picture of her last moments with her and i don't know if you have seen the video of her sister talking about her in the end it doesn't matter what anybody says or whatever anybody finds out at the end because they hope there will be a thorough investigation and i learned that those young men are already in custody so um yeah whatsoever the, the findings may be She's no more. She's gone. So I just feel that I just want to do this tribal to her. You know, today they are laying her to rest at the National uh, uh, Military Cemetery there in Abuja. And uh, yeah, what can we say? May her soul rest in peace. Um, like they already said, her life was short but full of impact. From 1995 to barely 24 years she she's supposed to be 24 this december but you know she didn't even make it up to 24 she's just 22 years old when this thing happened and like joke like joke she's no more but uh she made an impact and i i hope that uh the parents the family will find some closure um i think when you are um uh, um belong to the military uh, something like this is um supposed to be reckoned with but still you know there is no amount of uh, preparation that can prepare you for anything like this always always is the case so my heart goes out to the family to the sisters to the parents may god give them the fortitude to bear this loss and i pray that uh, she continue to rest in power she's a strong woman and she did well uh, she lived her life to the fullest she achieved her dreams she accomplished everything that she set out to do just like you know it is written that whatever your hands finds to do do it with all your might and she did that i pray that god almighty will rest her soul and i pray that her family will have the strength and the courage to bear this loss may her soul rest in peace may she rest in power rest in power first flying pilot to lulokbe arotile you laid a short but impactful life we are proud of you as a woman as a flying pilot as a young achiever you did well you did everyone who came across you proud you did well you made even we that we never met in person but we saw your documentary we saw your videos we saw your pictures you made us proud and uh, thank you for what you have done may you continue to rest in power amen well i feel very privileged i'm very proud I'm happy that my success has brought me to this point and I'm very grateful to the Nigerian Force leadership to for the opportunity to have this and uh, to have this title. I'm very grateful and I'm looking forward to giving my best to the service.